Hey everyone, John here with the Active Towns channel and I am uh, going to take you along for a ride down to the downtown area to uh, go vote. <laughs> it is elections day here in Austin, Texas. Uh, we don't have much on the ballot, just a couple of different uh, measures. Uh, so I'm heading down to do that and thought I'd take you along for the ride. So hope you enjoy the ride down to City Hall and uh, hey, Check out this uh, cool new shirt I've got uh, from Ryan Van Duzer. You can get your own fueled by Frijoles uh, shirt from Mr. Ryan Van Duzer. And yes, on the back of the shirt uh, is the famous saying that Ryan does every time when he heads on out. No crashies, no flatties, and no whammies. Good stuff. All right, let's swing around. And again, we are uh, kind of on the back routes, back roads route. I decided not to take the trail on the way to City Hall, at least not on this section or this side of the, the lake. Uh, we will drop down to the trail once we get over uh, Fluger Bike and Pedestrian Bridge. But I just wanted to show you this route because it's, uh, even though I'm sharing the space with cars, it's typically a very comfortable environment. Cars are typically traveling at reasonable speeds. Drivers are usually watching out for bikes and peds because it is an environment where you frequently see many people walking and biking. <laughs> they zero escaped the front of Horton Place. It's rather nice. And you notice we just took a nice little uh, trail connector there, connecting up to this trail, which takes us to the main Butler hike and bike trail. Again, critical connectors. Uh, the pathway that you may have seen to the side of that condo complex, Barton Place, was actually negotiated during the development phase of that building being built, constructed. And so that was a critical connector that uh, the city was able to negotiate with the developer. These are the types of whims that you look to have as you try to piece together an entire network. Also for my buddy Ryan, um, I am out today on my Priority 600. There we go. This is Ryan's uh, go-to bike, getting around town there in Boulder. And it's one of my city bikes that I like to use frequently for errands such as going to vote.
And again, we're up here on the Fluger Bike and Pedestrian Bridge, making our way over the beautiful Ladybird Lake, which is also known as the dammed up portion of the Colorado River here in the downtown Austin area. And get a nice view of the high rises in downtown. We're gonna take the spiral down here to the north side of the lake, the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. Get a good view of the flyover from below. And we're going to do the same that he was doing, which is taking this little uh, shortcut here. And again, this is a high comfort network, a high comfort route to City Hall. Notice I don't actually need to get on this busy strode that is Cesar Chavez. going to be a new park facility. It used to be the intake facility for the Seaholme power plant. And we're now on the Shoal Creek path. We're going to be making our way past the main central library on our way to City Hall. Yay, Gisalo! What you guys doing? Uh, bike mechanic clinic. Oh, bike mechanic yeah. clinic. Yeah. Fantastic. That's yeah. great. Send up. Yay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, is it free of charge? Yes, free of charge. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is John. Nice to meet you. Uh, take a moment to explain uh, what Gisalo is all about. Um, we empower individuals through cycling. Right. Overall. Yeah. Uh, from little kids, senior citizens. Yeah. Everything in the world. Yeah. It's a fantastic program. Again, empowering people of all ages, all abilities, uh, all socioeconomic levels. Uh, the Golden Rollers program is a wonderful program you guys have with the adult tracks. Uh, you get out to many of the schools around, especially on the east side, for sure, and down in San Antonio, too. So, again, Gisalo Foundation is one of our most beloved nonprofits here in the Austin area, doing some great work. Again, empowering people to be able to ride bikes more frequently. Most of the schools that they work with are Title I schools uh, where many of the kids can't even afford to buy lunch. So they do what they can to uh, help them get on a bike and learn how to ride a bike. Uh, really a fantastic program. Have to have them back on to the podcast again real soon. Okay, up this little hill. It's just a wee hill. Nothing like Boulder. I can do it, Ryan. I can do it. I'm fueled by freeholders, as the saying goes. And again, this is going to be eventually a pair of bike and pedestrian bridges. 
getting over Shoal Creek. Again, I'm down in the downtown area here in Austin, and I'm just making my way over to City Hall, which is just a couple blocks up and a couple blocks over. I'm gonna head down this way uh, just to kind of show you some of the compromises that had to be made in this area. Oftentimes there's buses needing to unload musicians and uh, you know other deliveries and such. So our destination is actually right down there. We're just gonna go around the block a little bit so I can show you Second Street. We are on Third Street right now. We're going to pop on down to second. It was also a street redo. These were all super wide, multi-lane, one-way streets. And many of them have been transformed back into two-way, like this street here, Colorado Street. And we'll also see that second street has been transformed from a multi-lane, one-way, into a two-way. There's no bicycle facilities on 2nd Street, but typically it's so incredibly slow. Motor vehicles are traveling at very reasonable speeds that you really never feel the need. You know, you just, it's really not an uncomfortable environment here on 2nd Street. If anything, if you did have a bike lane, you'd be able to go much faster. And in fact, I'm gonna become a pedestrian because I see some construction up ahead. So let's go jump the curb here. And so I've jumped the curb up onto the sidewalk here and I've become a pedestrian. I'm pretty much at City Hall ample time to get across the uh, crosswalk here and again we've got some construction going on this used to be a coffee shop a restaurant not sure what they're doing now but we are mere steps away from city hall i'm gonna actually jump back on the bike and roll in to the bike rack which is allowed I just didn't want to be on the bike when I was in the narrow portions of the sidewalk there. But now that we're here, and here we are, City Hall, early voting, let's go cast my vote. In case you're wondering, that is Cesar Chavez, a, a street that we saw earlier. You can see it is a monster of a street. Rarely do you see anybody actually riding a bike on that street. And in fact, she's up here on this level. And right on the other side of the street there is the Butler Hike and Bike Trail, as well as a trail connector um, right over the First Street Bridge. But uh, yeah, let's uh, swing this around. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the ride to City Hall. Let's uh, go cast my vote. All right, well, that was pretty painless. <laughs> Only two items on the ballot uh, today, uh, so it was really, really quick, but I found a fellow vote by bike <laughs> person. Uh, what's your name? Aubrey. Aubrey, thank you so much for uh, saying a quick word. Uh, so why did you choose to you know, vote by bike today? Well, I actually bike to work most days of the week. Okay. Um, 
so I've got my little e-bike here. I bike about five miles, ten miles round trip. Um, and City Hall was on my way home, so I knew I was going to vote today. Uh, and this was the most convenient location. So fantastic! Yeah. How much? This is an e-bike, right? Yeah, so how much having an e-bike uh, helps really empower you to be able to do that commute? Because that's a little bit longer than average. Yeah, it's great. Um, I do have a car, so this is mm -hmm. by choice. Like, I can drive if I want to, but um, I actually just get a lot out of it. Kind of personally, it's a great way to start the day. Um, I just, I get to bike along the river and, and see lots of interesting things. So, I, you know, when it's, when it's raining, I do drive. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just kind of believe in it personally from a environmental perspective and I really just enjoy it so yeah fantastic thank you so much yeah. yay okay and uh, with the voting all done civic duty complete we're gonna head on up to uh, we'll probably head up to second street again so that we can ride over what we call the butterfly bridge it's a nice little bridge with yellow wings and then we'll drop back down to the trail where we were before. And we do have a leading pedestrian interval, which uh, on bikes, we are allowed to uh, get a head start across the intersection as well. So here we go. And like I said, it's a, again, no infrastructure to speak of, but uh, I have rarely seen a motor vehicle going faster than 15, 20 miles per hour on second street here. It's just a really calm environment, typically. And again, we'll get the leading pedestrian interval as well. Here we go. And this is what we are affectionately calling the Butterfly Bridge. Might look familiar with the one that I saw in Nijmegen, with that sort of angle to it. And once again, we're back at the Central Library here. Yeah, and we'll make our way back down to the Shoal Creek Path. It's a beautiful May evening here in Austin. Folks are getting out on the trail. It's not too hot, quite seasonable in fact. Take the other way around here, getting up onto the spiral. And we do have a drinking fountain here. Always nice to have comfort facilities like bathrooms and drinking fountains. For the people and the pooches both.
we're climbing back up out of the bowl. Yeah, can't talk over that. Yuck. Ugh. Nothing like the taste of diesel exhaust in your mouth after those idiots. What I was going to say is we were climbing back up out of the uh, Butler Hike and Bike Trail. Now we're up here to make the transition across Barton Springs Road, back into the hood. And yes, all of those vehicles were technically breaking the law. They should have been yielding to me, but they never do. Or technically, I shouldn't say they never do. Sometimes people will yield, but if you don't get all four lanes yielding at the same time, you're basically a sitting duck trying to make your way across that intersection. So, sometimes it's just it's fine to be patient and wait for the gap. We are hopeful that that is going to get fixed in the near term. Hopefully a reduction in travel lanes going from a four to a two. There will be turn lanes in strategic locations so technically it'll be a three-lane road but I'm not holding my breath I've been hoping for that transformation for the past decade and it has not happened yet so we shall see And I don't know if you've noticed, but if you're uh, keeping track of the mobility mode choices, yeah. you can see that we've got pretty much more pedestrians out here than people driving. Believe it or not, we're actually out and about at rush hour right at this moment. There's not really much in the way of traffic calming here other than the road humps, little speed bumps that are in place here. You can see it right here. Pretty much one of the speed tables along the lines of a sinusoidal 
hump. It punishes cars going too fast, but uh, feels very comfortable to ride a bike on. Well, that's all she wrote, folks. <laughs> uh, again, that didn't take long at all. Head down to City Hall, get uh, get voted, get have make sure that my vote has been counted. Uh, thank you so much for coming along with me down to City Hall. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>